So in my last two videos, I covered the, the Konica 2A rangefinder, quite complex. The Canon P rangefinder, very, very simple, doesn't get in your way. And today, for my third rangefinder, we're going to cover something cheap and cheerful, like me. In the early 60s there was a range of rangefinders <laughs> out that uh, you could choose from. Now this is the time when the uh, Leica M3 was ruling the roost with rangefinders. So much so that quite a few companies just gave up making rangefinders and went to concentrate on SLRs. <coughs> Nikon <coughs> Canon. However, there was still room for some other rangefinders. And this one here, the Petri 7S, is aimed at the more snapshooter style photographer. So the family man. Until 1962 the company was called Kuribayashi. However they changed their name to Petri for 1963 which is when this camera came out. So this is the Petri 7S which is a slightly updated version of the Petri 7. It came with two different lenses. Non-interchangeable, they're fixed lenses, but uh, the cheaper version came with the 45mm f2.8 and the slightly more expensive version came with a f1.8 lens which is what I have here. It is a coupled rangefinder with a leaf shutter in the lens. It has the around the lens selenium cell that they call the circle eye. They were going a little bit funky with their branding making up names like circle eye and greenomatic for the rangefinder and putting in a few little funky design elements into the camera. Surprisingly, they pumped this out for 13 years, from 1963 to 1976. The lens has a 52mm thread mount, so very common, very easy to get filters for it. And of course, the filters also cover the selenium cell, which is very handy. Uh, and this thing weighs in at 635 grams. Not quite as heavy as the Canon or the Kaneka. Now, the manufacturer, Kuribayashi, before they changed their name to Petri, started back in 1907. They were well versed in making all sorts of cameras, old plate cameras back in the day, and then moving on to rangefinders. Kuribayashi was actually the first Japanese company to make an SLR. However, they didn't have the manufacturing facilities uh, good enough to compete with the brands of Nikon and Canon. By 1977, they declared bankruptcy. So on the Canon P, the film underwinds. On the Petri 7S, the film overwinds. So I suppose what you'd like depends on which way you hang your toilet roll. Loading the film into the Petri 7S, there's no real surprises here. You have a catch on the top of the door side. Simply pull it up. There's no locking system or anything. That's all you've got. Lift up the rewind spool. Now again, I'm going to be using some uh, Ilford Delta 400, black and white. And put the film in the back, lower the rewind, pull the film over till you've got enough to reach into the slot. Push the lead of the film in. Wind it on until it catches in the sprockets, like so. Close the back, wind it on. Then you can watch the rewind to make sure the film is winding and bring it across to number one, and then it's ready. So, on top of the Petri, you have your rewind lever, you have a cold shoe, you have your exposure meter, your shutter which is threaded. Lastly, the film counter. On the back of the Petri, you have your viewfinder, your film winder, and the winder lever feels very mechanical, and it has a distinct sort of thunk to it when it uh, cocks the shutter. Round to one side, 
you have the little lever that pops open the back and a strap lug. On the other side you simply have the strap lug. On the bottom of the camera you have a tripod mount. Happily to say it's mounted directly under the center of the lens. Then you have the release knob for winding back your film. Now we move to the front of the camera. The first thing I notice is this little opaque sort of window here. And the owner's manual says absolutely nothing about it. None of the reviews I've seen mention it at all. I don't know what it does. You've then got the name, of course. And the name plate has an arrow designed into it, which points to your focus length. You then have the rangefinder window, tinted green. We'll get to that. And then the viewfinder window. And a bit of a quirky design around those windows. So around the front of the lens you have a selenium cell inside the filter ring which is handy and Petri have called this their circle eye system for uh, light metering. So a bit of a gimmicky name there. The lenses on these are fixed it's a 45 mil and you can either get a 2.8 or a 1.8. This one is the 1.8. Then on the lens itself you have a setting for your ASA and that's very important because that controls your light meter so you uh, must make sure at the start of the film to match the ASA with your film stock then have your shutter speed ring goes from 500th of a second down to one second and then B the 60 is marked in red if uh, you're going to sink a flash however interestingly enough this does have a leaf shutter the second ring is your aperture ring you turn the ring and it will let you see your aperture this one of course goes down to 1.8 being a 1.8 lens have your focus throw which is very short however it does feel a bit rough and metallic-y feels cheaper than say the Canon or the Konica but the throw is nice and short which is good however the minimum focusing distance 2.75 feet or about 80 centimeters which isn't very close at all you have to be at least an arm's length away from the subject photographing to the side of the lens you have self timer you have to push that all the way up to the top for the self timer to actuate you also have a lever here for your flash you can put it to M or X on the other side of the lens is your flash sync port now another bit of a marketing quirk apart from the uh, circle eye label of the selenium cell they call their rangefinder system a green o -matic, simply because they've, they have a green tinted screen in the front of the rangefinder window so that your rangefinder patch you see is actually tinted and apparently that makes it easier to see so the Petri 7S green matic focus patch let's just see how well that goes funnily enough normally it's quite easy to use however being green if you're taking shots in the forest lots of greenery around everywhere it's a little bit harder to use So as well as having a light meter on top of the camera, it's also in the viewfinder. So as you look through the viewfinder on the right is the light metering needle. So anyway, I've loaded the Ilford Delta 400 black and white film into this. So uh, I'll get out there and shoot a roll.
So there you go, the Petri 7S. A bit cheaper made than the Canon P or the Konica 2A, which I reviewed. There's links below for them. But this is still 50 years old and still in perfect condition, so it's weighed well enough. Uh, it is cheaper than the others. It's got the built-in light meter, which the others haven't got. Yeah, it takes decent photos. Don't forget, like, subscribe, buy me a coffee. All links below as well. But whatever camera you got, pick it up, take it for a walk, and have some fun. Bye.